Emma and Layla, I just want to come on and say congratulations and amazing, amazing performances through the two weeks. And really just, I mean, it's so exciting to see these two ladies play. And uh, they can literally save the sport of tennis. Not that tennis was, um, you know, need to be saved, but, but let's face it. I mean, for a long time, with Serena fading away, with Roger and Rafa going away, and, and Novak just left there, a lot of people were wondering, you know, how will tennis do when the legends leave? And we can see two stars instantly born that, in my mind, could be bigger than any other legend before them. You know, it's a big if. They have to win. They have to back up what they did at the U.S. Open, which was amazing. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I can't remember two players so electrifying that everyone loves, that everybody loves. Um, they play exciting tennis. They, they're in exciting matches. And... You know, their reactions to their shots are just very endearing. That the, What they say after matches uh, is just so poised, interesting, graceful, intelligent, lovable, uh, you know, you name it. And, and I cannot think of any uh, two players at the same time who, who have taken the, the sport by such storm. I mean, they could bring tennis, in my mind, to a level – that we've never seen before in popularity. This is all predicated on if they can back it up. We know that that is a big if, but let's just let's just say they can. I mean, I was thinking this morning. I, I can't stay on too long because I got to go teach some tennis, which I'm excited about. But uh, I cannot think of anyone who came on so quickly and was so loved, like. I mean, it's impossible not to love these two players. I don't. I, I haven't run into anybody who goes, "Oh yeah, I don't. I don't like that Emma. I don't like that Layla." I mean, they they love them. And Steffi Graf, yeah, which Steffi Graf, popular player, but I don't think as loved as these two. Uh, and and she certainly in interviews, Steffi Graf in the beginning of interviews, and, and really throughout her whole career, was she ever an amazing? interview where you couldn't wait to hear what she was going to say. So I say no on Steffi Graf. I mean, the other big rivalry, probably the biggest, longest rivalry in women's tennis that everybody really loved was um, Martina versus Chrissy. And Chrissy, you know, everybody think, oh, everybody loved Chrissy. And they should have. I mean, I don't I don't think that, that um, it was justified. But when Chris ever first came on this on the scene, you know, a lot of people loved her, but a lot of people didn't. In fact, she uh, had a had a nickname of like the Ice Queen or something like that. Like people thought she was cold. Um, I remember I, that must have been a little bit before I came along and really watched tennis. Maybe just a couple of years, because by the time I really paid attention to Martina Chrissy rivalry, everybody kind of loved Chrissy. Um, but even even that, which you know, was, did such great things for tennis, I don't think those two were as quickly and as widely loved instantly. I mean, this is just a lightning rod. Uh, Roger Federer is. I mean, does anybody love anybody more than Roger? I mean, everybody loves Roger Federer. But even Roger Federer, when he first came on, was not as popular, was not as loved. I mean, he was kind of flying under the radar for a while until everybody just decided they loved Roger. But you know, certainly even in interviews and things like that. I don't think Roger is even as good as these two. I cannot think, how are you doing, Bashkar? I cannot think of any two players in the history of the game, and that's saying a lot, on the men's or the women's side. I mean, I'm inclus including Rafa in that, Boris Becker, John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, I, I, like uh, Serena and Venus, um, Justine. I can't think of any any two players where every single person loves these two. In fact, I was reading, uh, I was reading some comments after watching Layla's ex uh, 
you know, not acceptance speech for coming in second, which was amazing how she thanked the New York crowd. And she had the presence of mind to mention that it was September 11th and that she's sorry for all they've gone through and how she's inspired by them. And uh, there was a comment, but just, I mean, tons of comments, but one of them, like, I have not smiled so much uh, after watching a match and watching interviews, you know, in a long, long time. And I think that that's what people are really excited about is it's been a long, long time since everybody's been inspired by two tennis players to where that they're going to be bigger than the sport. They're going to cross over in popularity uh, that a lot of tennis players just cannot do. They're, they, you know, they're, they're just known in the tennis world. But Emma and Layla, if they keep winning, they will be well known way outside the tennis world. They will be big stars. You know, the same way that Venus and Serena became international celebrities. I mean, that's the thing even about Venus and Serena. Venus and Serena have a, a lightning rod response in that everybody has an opinion on Venus and Serena, which, which I think that's a great thing for tennis. I think when you have something special when everybody has an opinion on you, they either absolutely love you or a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, hate Venus and Serena. Um, I personally like them both. Uh, but I will say that these two are even much more easy to like right off the bat with the, with the way they um, carry themselves, the things that they say. And, and, uh, but, you know, they were, they're, they're huge stars. They're, they're, so many people uh, know and love Venus and Serena and they don't even watch tennis. That's what these two players are going to be able to do for the sport. So I just want to uh, thank them first of all and wish them well. And I really, really hope that they're able to keep winning because if they're able to keep winning, that's that's the secret sauce. I mean, that's what all the legends I'm talking about were able to do. You know, Martina and Chrissy, they kept winning. Connors kept winning. McEnroe kept winning. Sampras kept winning. Agassi kept winning. You know, Agassi was another one. Maybe Agassi, the closest comparison I can think about, that he instantly, as soon as somebody saw him play tennis, he instantly had that star power. And most people loved Agassi, but even he, with his long hair, and and he 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 uh, was a star right away, but didn't win right away. Even people had a, a negative um, kind of thought of of Agassi. So. You know, these two, I think we're in our uncharted, very uncharted, exciting waters for the sport of tennis to where if they're able to keep winning, they're going to be so huge for tennis. This could put tennis into a place that we've never been or seen as far as popularity, make a boom like you have never seen. Um, and I'm talking about the men's or the women's. This This is the biggest thing. I have ever seen in tennis in such a short amount of time and time will tell if they're going to be able to back it up. And I am just putting it right here right now. I am praying that they can back this up. I would love to see them keep winning, keep getting to finals. It will be the greatest rivalry ever. It'll be one of the rare rivalries where we're, where you're rooting for both players, where you're rooting for both players. Um, please do a forehand analysis on Emma Redekanu. Uh, yes, I'm going to do that, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be analyzing this week. I'm going to be analyzing uh, all the people who got to the to – this. I, I thought that this was one of the best. Let me know what you guys think, too. Interesting. You know, Roger and Rafa, you wouldn't think – it's no Serena, no Roger, no Rafa. You would think that this might be a very disappointing U.S. Open. This was one of the best U.S. Opens I can remember as far as so many amazing matches. So many amazing matches. Uh, so many interesting things going on on both the men and the women's side. So it was great. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be doing, I'll be doing uh, analysis on 
Medvedev, on Djokovic, on Zarev, on uh, who was our other semifinalist, uh, Felix OJ all day. I'll, I'll be uh, looking at Emma and Sakari and Layla. I'll be doing all of that. So, yeah. So, as, as Colin said, so exciting, exciting time, so much potential. You know, this is a great time to be a fan of tennis and to love tennis. And I, I think that these two ladies are going to bring tennis to a level we've never seen before as far as popularity, create another big tennis boom. So many, I think, boys and girls are going to be inspired by the two and want to play tennis and want to watch tennis and want to watch their interviews and, 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 and their role models. I mean, they just have the full package, the entire full package. And uh, I just hope that they keep winning. You know, that that is my biggest fear. And it's a justified fear, I think, because this is so new and so unexpected to both of them that we really don't know how they're going to react. You know, they, they in lots of ways are in shock as much as we are in shock of seeing what happened. And uh, we've seen so many players and that's why legends are such a rare thing. We've seen so many players uh, win big matches and have a tough time backing it up. The pressure gets to them. The celebrity gets to them. They don't know how to, how to balance their life uh, after a big win. We can see that uh, Osaka is struggling with this. Um, Dominic Thiem, besides getting injured, uh, interestingly enough, and, and, and kind of sad, uh, after he won the U.S. Open, he, he went through a little bit of depression. He was depressed after he won the U.S. Open because he was thinking, wow, I've worked so hard for this, and is, is this all there is? And, and, you know, lots of times, unfortunately, uh, we as fans start to judge and bash, which I think is wrong. Um, Chris Everett, who was able to keep winning and winning and winning, uh, there's an interview where she talks about just to kind of give you some insight of how hard it is on these players to travel, to to uh, to sacrifice. Uh, Chris, after she won Wimbledon one year, she was very lonely. She had been through a recent breakup, and so she felt completely alone. And the the night, can you imagine this? You just wouldn't think this when you watch them on TV and they're holding up their trophies and everybody's cheering for them. You think that they have the greatest life and and you're so uh, envious and maybe a little jealous. Uh, Chris talked about crying in her hotel room the entire night that she won Wimbledon. So, you know, what we see on the outside isn't always what's going on on the inside. And so I wish these ladies well, that they're able to, to find inspiration to keep winning, to keep improving their game, which they're going to need to because now they're heavily on everybody's radar. Everybody's going to be gunning for them now. They're going to want to beat them. And so they're going to have to keep improving. They're going to have to stay hungry. They're going to have to deal with the media. They're going to have to deal with all the uh, people clawing at them for interviews and magazine covers and all kinds of things. So it'll be pretty interesting to see that they can uh, if they can stay focused. You know that that's what what Novak is able to do right now. You know he he knows how to handle all this. That's why he's in the final again, win or lose. I mean. Look what an amazing accomplishment Novak Djokovic has done. He's he's won the three majors. He had a big setback and uh, physically and mentally at the Olympics, and here he is in the finals again. And and of course, every question in the press conference, even though he says he doesn't want to talk about it too much, is always asking him about the Grand Slam. And he says, "Look, guys, I just want to keep things simple. I keep my inner circle close. I I depend on my rituals." I know what I need to do to win. He's figured out the formula. And, and that is such a hard thing to do because most people who win, they go through a little bit of, of, of a slump. You know, it, it look, look at all the people, especially on the, on the women's side, because there hasn't been much breakthrough on the men's side. You know, Serena's had more injuries and things like that. So she, she wins and then there's no one else to, to win if she doesn't win. So there's been a lot of female champions uh, with Grand Slams other than Serena, but she's the only one who's been able to win consistently. Uh, a lot of them, after they win one or two, they, they go away. So 
It'll be very interesting to see if these ladies can do it. Um, let's see, Jason Bourne says, they're both very mature, way more mature than 18, 19 year old teenagers. Heck, even more mature than a lot of grownups. I mean, that, that's what's so in, amazing too, is the presence of mind that they both have in the interviews is just awesome. I mean, Layla's runner-up speech was one of the greatest speeches I've ever seen. I mean, she was just so endearing. And 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 the way she addressed the New York crowd was was amazing how she said that they're so that she's so inspired and, and you know it, it makes you feel old, but she said that that her parents had to really tell her what happened on September 11th when she was growing up. And that story meant a lot to her. So she wanted to, to, to say that to the crowd. That's why I saw her in, her, in a press conference after on court speech. And, and Emma, the things that she says in that beautiful English accent, um, you know, everything about them is likable. I haven't run into anybody and people love to give opinions. People love to give opinions and, and they love to tell you who they don't like. And, and, uh, and so uh, I haven't heard anybody tell me yet that they don't like Emma and that they don't like Layla. And if you don't like them, what is wrong with you? It's, it's like, it's like not liking a puppy. It's like, it's like looking at this B2 face and saying, I hate B2. I don't think, I don't like this dog. Of course you love this dog. How can you not love this dog? See, this dog represents Layla and Emma. It's impossible not to love them. And I am just so excited this morning. That's why I had to come in on at 7.32. I knew a lot of people probably not going to watch this live stream, but I just wanted to get it on record out there on video uh, for everybody and congratulate Layla and Emma. And, and I hope to see them a lot more on the big screen. I'd love to go watch them play in person. And, uh, and let me know what you guys think. You know, uh, Do you think that Layla and Emma are going to be able to back this up? Are they going to be able to keep winning big matches? Uh, are we seeing two legends in the making? Uh, we certainly, they're already superstars, but are we going to see two legends to where they're going to uh, keep winning? Um, they're young kids. None of us knows the future. Let's have a conversation one year from now. We'll have a greater perspective and a, a objectivity. That's for sure. Yeah, that's, that's very true, Christopher. We don't know. Um, I'm just hoping that the pressure doesn't get to them and, and I wish them the best. And I want to thank them for uh, making my two weeks more exciting, uh, feeling good. There's so much negativity out in the world, but this, this, this was a, a feel good story, uh, inspirational story and, and, uh, super excited to see them. So, uh, anyway, guys, you, you take care. And uh, I wish you well. Enjoy the final uh, later today. Maybe if I have time, although it's a very busy day, I'm running another camp. Bashkar has been to my camp. Bashkar, tell everybody how my camps are. Um, but yeah, I'm finishing up a camp. So uh, I, I do want to definitely come on and talk about uh, Novak and his amazing accomplishment and, and Mevedev, who you know reminds me a lot of Novak in a way as far as when he's playing very well. Um, it's very, very hard to win points like he, those two, I mean, I'm thinking Medvedev, Djokovic and Rafael Nadal, maybe the three toughest players I can think of, of off the top of my head who, where it, it, it just feels at times it's impossible to win points. So, you know, that, that's what Medvedev has going in his favor. Uh, one thing you cannot deny, <clears throat> excuse me here, guys is Djokovic's path to the final much tougher than Medvedev. And Medvedev can be like Djokovic into where it's very physical. He goes in lockdown mode. He barely misses, but he's hitting the ball hard too. He's, he's doing a lot of amazing things. It's not like he's just not missing. Um, he's doing special things while he's not missing. And so, you know, this is about as good a chance as Medvedev's going to have because he's coming in fresh. He's coming in hot. He got the proper preparation, being able to play in Canada and being able to play in Cincinnati, but not 
having to play a bunch of five setters to get all the way to the U.S. Open. It's like for Medvedev, you can't write a better script to have your big breakthrough. Novak is going to fight till the death, though, because this is it, guys. This is it. If he wins, he is the GOAT. There's no argument. There's no logical number argument you can make. He will have won the Grand Slam. He will have 21 majors. And so both these players have a heavy incentive to bring their best. So um, there you go. Uh, do you think Medvedev can stop all in Djokovic? I mean, that, that's the thing. That's a great line. Do you think Medvedev, who's super motivated, can stop all in Djokovic? Because Djokovic says, I'm all in. I, it's, it's, it, this is it. So, I mean, that'd be kind of crazy to say yes. You know, I, I mean, you don't bet against all in Djokovic. But at the same time, Medvedev said he's going to turn up the heat that he at the Australian Open was um, trying hard. But when he looks back at the match, he realizes he didn't leave it all on the table. So he's he's saying this match, I'm turning up the heat on myself. So you got two very motivated people, two amazing players. Enjoy it. I've got to go. Have a great day. Thank you, Bashkar, for saying a wonderful camp, an eye opener. Um, take care. Have a great day, guys, and and like up this video, share it. It's early in the morning, so a lot of people are not watching this. Hopefully, we can pick up some views as the day goes on. Because I, I just wanted to come on and thank uh, Layla and Emma. I'm super inspired by you, two wonderful players, and I hope to see you a lot more on TV, and I hope to watch you play live one day.